without going into detail of what exactly happened that led up to this moment. After I went unconscious, I woke up in a field of lilacs. I didn't know what lilacs looked like until after that experience. Foggy and the air was cool. I tried talking, asking myself, Where am I? But nothing came out. I couldn't speak. I look around, trying to decipher the location, but nothing came to mind. Snow-capped mountain tops and a pink sunset appeared over my shoulder and I seen a tree blossoming with pink flowers, sun rays filtering through the branches. I noticed that I didn't feel anything emotionally. I suffer from depression and crippling anxiety in my waking life, but here I felt at ease. I didn't feel the day-to-day -day emotions I felt usually. I look in front of me and I see a person wearing a gray hoodie and jeans. Mind you, their hood was up, same built and height as me. I decided to walk towards them to see if they knew what was going on. As I started getting closer, the air got colder and the flowers seemed to get a grayish tint of them. I finally made it to the person, putting my hand over their shoulder to make them turn towards me. They were ice cold to the touch. As they turned towards me, where their face should have been was just a dark void. No outline of a face, just black. I jumped back and instantly started running to where I'd previously been. As I was running, everything started to get brighter. I kind of leaped at a tree that was behind me at the beginning and I was engulfed in a blinding light. I woke up and not going to get into graphic details, Something in my head kept telling me to get help and to not stop moving. Ever since then, I haven't been afraid of death and have become more spiritual. I guess you can call that. Can someone please help me figure this out? I have no idea what to make of this. Either way, I love to tell my story to people who are not my family, who are biased. This is going to be long, so please bear with me. When I was three, I was with my mother who failed to watch me or pay any attention to me. Her and my father were not good parents to me and neglected me frequently, which led them to lose their parental rights to me when I was only five years old. I spent a lot of time with my dad's parents, but one day when I was with them, my dad left to get something and left me with my mom, who neglected me badly on several occasions, but I won't get into that. This story was recounted by me as a three-year-old because I could talk real well to my dad and my grandmother and any other family who was close to me at the time, so this isn't just made-up stuff that I'm telling you. I told my family that my mother wasn't paying attention to me, that she was playing with a dog that was on our property which was sort of in a country of a big piece of land owned by a man who dug citterns all around it. Since she wasn't paying me any mind, me, being a normal, adventurous three-year-old, decided to walk out of the house by simply opening the door. Turns out, my mother has a dissociative disorder, so she honestly probably had no idea I left. As I wandered around, I obviously eventually ran into one of those citterns I mentioned. If you don't know what a citern is, it's basically a hole in the ground to collect rainwater, and they were all boarded up by the owner. But I guess one wasn't properly boarded up, and I fell into it. Through the mucky water, I was only three, so I imagined that it was deep enough for a small child to drown in it. It was also February at the time, so it was cold, and I was bundled up in a heavy clothing and boots. This detailed I also told my grandma, who was with me in the hospital as soon as I woke up. Apparently, I told her all sorts of weird stuff, and I'll tell you too. Okay, so, my mom eventually realized that I was inside the house. Genius. And she called my dad to come back. Now, I'm not sure how much time passed exactly during this, but I assumed that it was at least 5-10 to 10 minutes before she even realized I was gone. Then, my dad had to actually drive back to the house. I don't know how far he was, so that could have taken at least 5-10 to 10 minutes. I don't know. I'll never know. Then, of course, it took my dad who found me, however long to search for me, and eventually found me bottom of the citron. So maybe another 10 minutes, maybe less. All in all, 20 plus minutes passed 
and I was already dead. That blows my mind. Every time I think about it, I think about this fairly often because I just can't believe it happened to me. I was able to get some information from my dad who unfortunately passed away a few years back and he told me some really spooky stuff about it too. He told me that when he was searching for me, he ran past a lot of citrons, but not until he ran past one that I was in was when he felt a slap in his back and chest. I forgot which one he said, but it was either one of those. But he told me he felt like a hard slam into him after searching frantically for me and not finding me. It was then that he knew that I was in that citron that he passed by, and he jumped right into it. And sure enough, there I was, at the bottom of it. I sunk because of my weight in my clothing. Also, nobody was around him when he felt that force into his chest or back. He was alone. So clearly, he called 911. But I forgot if he told me about the paramedics and police came before or after he found me. It was getting kind of fuzzy because he told me this was almost five years ago. But he did say that when he found me, I was able to be revived and I'm pretty sure he told me that he was the one who brought me back to life. It took more than five minutes, he said. And at one point, he didn't think I'd come back. Why would I? I was cold, blue, with no pulse, and I had dirt in my nose, ears, and eyes. I was in there waiting longer than normally what any kid could survive in. I don't know how I survived that and how I'm alive today. It's crazy to me. When I came back, they had to airlift me to the hospital, and I was in a coma for a few days. My grandma was the one who was with me when I woke up. She told me that I told her that her mother came to me when I died and told me to go back to my body. But I told her no. I didn't want to. I was happy there. Whatever the F that means. That I felt safe and loved. My grandmother was confused because I had never met her mother and she had never told me her name before. She tells me these were my words. I saw Mary. She told me to come back to my body. But I didn't want to but I finally listened. She told me I described her mother's appearance and what her name was. I was never told what her name was. My grandma to this day tells me that this is the sole reason she believes in the afterlife in a spirit realm. She has faith because of what happened to me. I know this is a really long story and I'm going to wrap it up and I'm sorry if this is the wrong place for the story, but I didn't know where else to put this. I think about it a lot and I don't tell many people about what happened because I don't want them to call me crazy. But I was only three years old and I only know what my family tells me. It's always the same story and why would they lie about something like that? I even saw pictures of me in the hospital. They were effing eerie and creepy. I don't feel like it's me, but it is. It's wild to me that I survive without any type of brain damage. I have tons of anxiety and... I'm super aware of things around me too. Does anyone have any insight of why would a three-year-old would randomly know of their great-grandmother's name without knowing prior and who has been dead way before I was born? I had a very eerie feeling one night before I went to bed. I could feel my breathing slowing down before I fully fell asleep. And right before I fell asleep, I couldn't breathe. I choked. Eventually, I blacked out and seen a third person view of myself lying there, all blue, and something told me that I was dead. And there was no way to go back. I sat above myself pondering on what happened. And then I saw myself jerk and I went back into my body and all the air just flew back into my body like a vacuum. It was so scary. I sat there and cried about it all night. I have never told this to anyone except you. I want to share my story and hope maybe I could find someone who has a similar experience. I'm having trouble processing what I've been through and I want to hear others experience as well. I recently got laced and overdosed and I was dead for at least 10 minutes. 
My friends saved me by rushing me to a hospital. I had no pulse between the time that I was with my friend's house and at the hospital. My lips were blue by the time I got there. The last thing I remember was lying down and talking to my best friend who was there. I woke up in the hospital bed with people rushing in, surrounding me, and I was terrified having no idea what happened. When they told me that I was dead, I lost it. I haven't been able to wrap my head around it since. While I was dead, I didn't see a bright light or anything of that nature. I was very close to my father who passed away a couple years ago, and I didn't see him or any deceased relatives. It wasn't even black. It was just lost time. It could have been a year or 30 seconds, and I would have known the difference. If someone has a similar experience or, or can explain why I didn't have a spiritual experience like others did, please do tell me. I went to a place where hate felt against the laws of physics. I know it sounds stupid, just let me try to explain. I died in 2015. I talked about my experiences here and there, but want to elaborate on this one part. The place I went to, it felt like hate was literally against the laws of physics. It was a place where I saw people that I loved and people that I hated, but all I could see was them was just the most purest rawest of humanity. It was impossible to see anything but their purest, truest humanity, their soul. And it felt oddly constricted. I had the sense that something I had felt before was just removed from me. The ability to ever hate. It was as if hate was literally against the laws of physics. An abstract concept that could not be conceptualized by me in this world. Wherever I was, but at the same time, my eyes were also open to the people that I thought of pain. I saw their suffering. It was like their souls had opened up wide in front of me. I saw nothing but their suffering and humanity, but I didn't feel sad. Sad just felt against the laws of this place too. Just unconditional acceptance. My heart was overflowing with love and understanding. Understanding of their suffering and their truth. My near-death experience radically changed me. It changed my whole personality. There's not a trace of who I was left. I feel pain. I feel hate. Because I live in this world where it was a part of it. But I feel so free in context knowing that a place like this exists. Every day I am so happy and joyous. I no longer care a bit about this world. Because I know that one day it will end. And I will be in this new realm. And whatever has hurt me in this world will be impossible to conceptualize. I changed my career from aerospace engineering to be a hospice caregiver. I don't make much money, but money has no value to me anymore. I tolerate the financial system as much as I have to, just to be able to live a simple little life. From a capitalist perspective, I'm worthless. From a spiritual perspective, I am doing the highest level of work imaginable. I comfort people and make them happy. I could never do anything else. After this happened, I can't believe there was a day in my life where I wanted to engineer fighter jets. It all seems so foreign to me and honestly ridiculous to me now. I just feel so free. I don't care a bit about what anyone thinks of me anymore because I know it doesn't matter. I will not feel those feelings one day. I will no longer feel embarrassment. I feel like my time on earth is like encountering in an interesting little coffee shop while traveling and going in to have some coffee, marveling at the decorations, chatting with people, and then moving on to where you're supposed to go. That's what I feel like this earth is, the little coffee shop. My boyfriend sometimes gets embarrassed by my free spiritual behavior, but I think he's too attached to his world, like I used to be. I moderate my behavior for his sake, as he still lives in this world. But in the end, I just want to live and feel free for the rest of my days here. I know everyone on this earth isn't happy and free. I just want to spend my time here making other people's experience better. To love and care for the ones that doesn't have the same gift and freedom as me. This world isn't as important as people think it is. I'm not trying to preach or sway away anyone. 
I'm just going to tell the truth. I got shot seven times. Seven. I should have been shot more, but luckily the guy that shot me had a bad aim. I died at least three times. That's clinically. What happened during the time was pretty intense. I'm going to try to sum it up to the few paragraphs and words as words don't really do it, but let's just begin. After I was shot, I saw myself from an outside perspective, flying through a dark tunnel. I saw a ball of light, like energy, I was flying super fast. This is all I could recollect for days, me flying through the dark tunnel, but nothing more. I was having flashes of what was soon to become a full memory, but I pushed them aside as just the morphine messing with my head. On the third day I was in the hospital, a surgeon came in and asked me if I remember waking up after they shocked me and pumped me full of adrenaline. I have no recollection at all. He said that I came back and went back down, and then came back again, screaming, No! No! Let me go! I still didn't remember. He asked me again in a different tone, telling me that he's seen it before and was curious as well. He said they had to restrain me, even though I was shot twice in the chest and had a jaw and shoulder in pieces. I was fighting hard for something. As it started to come back, I denied remembering anything again because I didn't want to sound crazy. I'm not crazy. After the tunnel, I was all of a sudden in the most beautiful blue water I've ever seen. I describe it as a coloring book blue, a shade of blue that only a child might know. When was the last time you played with crayons? <laughs> On each side of the grass that was just beautifully colored as the water. There were people lined up on both sides though. I didn't really pay attention to them much. I'll never forget the smiles that the love I felt radiated from them in every direction, especially right in front of me. At the end of the water was the most beautiful light I've ever seen. A sun that you can stare directly at, so to speak. With all my heart, I had to get to it. Like a child's love for candy. I needed it. I don't know why, but... It was my entire life wrapped up into one mission, to get to this beautiful light. It gets blurry here, but I remember being right there in front of it, feeling an ecstasy no other person on earth can explain, unless you've experienced it. There's not a word in English language that explains it. Apparently, they shocked me. I came up and went back down again. That part, I kind of remember it. That was then that God spoke to me. It hit me around the chest. The words did. It's not your time. It wasn't words. It was energy being passed from him to me. So the second time the surgeon asked, it came back to me quickly. Everything that happened, I remember not wanting to leave. I remember the love, the light, the ecstasy of what home really feels like. The fight I put up. How dare them take me away from there. Next time you leave work, a friend's a restaurant, or say you're going home, just remember that while home is where your heart is, you're not home yet. You'll all inevitably see, eventually. And it's nothing to be afraid of. When we cry at a funeral, that's us being selfish that we didn't do this or that. The person you're crying for is yourself. The person that passed did just that. Passed the test of life. It is now full of more love than you can ever imagine. Be happy for them and pray the day you'll see them again. I remember shooting up through a wormhole. Then all of a sudden, landing on a hill that looked directly over a giant city made of bright lights. The buildings looked like energy crystals and was radiating pure white energy. I felt full euphoria as I was looking upon heaven. Then I felt a presence near me or all around me. I couldn't see anyone, but I knew he was there. Maybe God, maybe an angel or just something of pure positive vibration engulfing me. Then he started to speak to me. He asked, what do you want to know? And I simply replied, everything. Immediately after I said that, it was like he, Thanos snapped his fingers, even though I didn't see a physical body. And I was transported back down to the wormhole, 
at an insane velocity back down to earth. As I was falling, everything in my life started to connect together. It felt like my brain synapses were firing off like a machine gun, and everything that I had experienced in my life was connected together piece by piece when I came back down to my physical body. It felt like I'd been hit by a truck, but mentally, everything made sense and I felt a sense of relief and joy that stuck with me for weeks until I finally started to fade back into the grass of society and life again. I can't remember everything that was taught to me, but I lived my life knowing that there was more to life than just this physical realm. I suffer from a seizure, not the arm flapping kind. I was told I put my head down and stopped breathing. My lips turned blue as they waited for an ambulance to get there. I was aware and could hear people around me. I was getting my hair done when it all happened, and the poor stylist was screaming into the phone. I was aware of being very warm and comfortable. I knew that I wasn't breathing, but there was no anxiety or discomfort with it. Everything was very relaxed. There is a sense of otherness, God. All the other names in different religions apply just as well. I knew just then as that there is no one right in religion or spiritually. Just like you can climb a mountain using more than one trail, so is our non-physical life. When you die, you can choose to stay forever as a separate being reincarnated to another life. Stay for a while, then reincarnate or or simply become part of the otherness and lose yourself into it. Someone told me that it was not my time, that each of us has a set time to live on earth. When your time is up, it is up. I was not given an explanation beyond that. I got sent back and started breathing on my own before the ambulance guys could do much with me. I am 27 and never posted the story. When I was 22, I overdosed it. And then I remember my stomach burning. And the last thing that I remember seeing was a show that I was watching at the time, Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Then I blinked my eyes. And as quickly as you snap your fingers, I remember all the suffering and depression and anxiety and evil thoughts and who I thought I was just instantly lifted up. I remember seeing colors made to a Mandela or a kaleidoscope, but every color bounced off to the other color. Like there is no defined line of separation. I could draw a line between the colors. And I remember there being a sunlight that tore through all of this mass of universal energy. I remember crying and reaching my arm out. I wanted what was in front of me. I wasn't doing anything you can associate to a human label. I was free and at home at at a level that I could not even fathom or how to begin to describe in words. In a snap, as quickly as you blink, I went from a suffering in a body in a life that I hated, thinking what was awaited for me was non-existence, only to be hit with the reality, similar to a dog running through a field of flowers on a sunny day after living every day of his life since birth in captivity. I was absolutely free. I could not communicate that harder. A moment I understood God, the purpose of life, who I am, my purpose, humanity's purpose. I understood alignment, vibration, frequency, energy, and also the realization that I know all of this moment I eliminate separation the moment I died. My body was dead for four and a half minutes. I woke up in the hospital to the nurse saying to me, we had to give you the paddle. You had a stroke when we had to revive you. You died. You were in a coma for three days. She told me this immediately after I had this profound experience and all I could think of was, take me back there. I had no real emotion reaction to be brought back other than just being blown away by what I experienced. And I sat there for days thinking how nothing was going to be the same after how this affected my reality. How wrong I was. Everyone treated me the same except for a small party I got thrown. Everyone kept saying the same dynamic. I had to go in pretending to be this person. Everyone still spoke to me and treated me the same. It's like life carried on. 
and the only person who this affected was me. And that's right. That is what's happening and what will be happening now and what will continue to happen forever. I still want to go back. People tell me not to and about how brave I am and how they feel sorry for my suffering. Blah, blah, blah. It's like a broken record. No amount of drugs can match the peace I felt. No amount of partners can give me the amount of love. No amount of safety and comfort in my reality can make me feel that vibrational aligned. My home doesn't feel like home. My relations all feel like they can only go as far, no matter how deep they were. Anything that tries to make me feel scared just doesn't. Even after getting shot in the hood in Detroit, there was no fear. There was adrenaline, sure, but... But the fear of getting shot or dying or going to the hospital in that moment didn't exist. If you want to know my religion, I'm a mystic. I think every religion and spiritual practice has an inherent and feedable truth. But no one religion or spiritual practice is the only one. After dying, this has become my favorite quote. And definitely in my book, the most true when it comes to spiritually. There are hundreds of paths upon the mountain all lead into the same place. So it doesn't matter which path you take. The only person wasting time is the one who runs around the mountain, telling everyone that his or her path is wrong. Thank you for reading my experience. Please don't comment about you think that my brain was just releasing DMT. That's what everyone says, and it's getting really old. I get it a lot. October 3rd, 2020. I call that day my new birthday. While at work, I had just eaten my lunch. My neck started to hurt first, and then it went to my chest. I had severe chest pains a year ago. They told me that it was ingestion, so I thought that it was the same thing happened again. So I got off my bulldozer and had a friend take me to the office. I'm figuring that I need to take some Tums. I told my medic what was happening. She gave me Tums and aspirin. She knew I didn't look right. Then the pain went into my arm. Now everyone is freaking out, including me. So I prayed to God and asked for forgiveness. Soon, I told him that the pain was leaving, and that's when I passed out. When I woke up, the medic was on my chest pushing. I asked why she was doing that. She replied that my heart stopped. I said, no it didn't. I told everyone that I was just sleeping and had this dream that I want to tell them about. That's when she said, Brian, you died. W what? So I started looking around the room. My shirt is cut open, and the defibrillator was still talking. Realization hit me like a ton of bricks. When I passed out in the dark, then the light came in, so bright that I couldn't see anything. Then, I was inside the light. I looked all around me and saw nothing but light. Then, it started to go away, like a lifting fog. I was coming out of the other side. I first started seeing pine trees that was just floating above. I floated down and looked under me and that there was this garden so intense with different colors that it entranced me. All I could do was stare as I float to its right. So now I'm looking across the sky and I saw lights lined straight up and down and they were moving towards me. As they got closer, more lights started appearing. I had no fear and oh my God, all the lights merged together and formed a man. He was all light. No facial features, just a light. And he floated up and down and sideways in front of me. I could tell he was looking at me. Then he moved to the right so fast that he left tracers of himself. That's when I opened my eyes, laying on the floor. I died again in the ambulance. I didn't see the light that time. All I saw was a giant circle filled with flowers. I died a third time on the operating table, but can't remember what I saw because they all shocked me really fast, so I wasn't gone for long. All I felt was love. I'm currently 28, but I never really recounted this experience in writing. I hardly ever talk about it. I died when I was 9 years old as a result of complications from HSP. 
which is a disorder, caused an inflammation and bleeding in the small blood vessels. Shortly before I died, surgeons had given me a near lethal dose of morphine, in an attempt to starve off my body's rapid self-destruction. They were in the process of trying to drain fluids throughout my body when it happened. For three minutes, my heart was stopped, and while they continued desperately, working their way to save my life, it was like killing a flooded engine to stop a sinking ship. I was immediately divorced from my body, but still aware that there was me dead on the table, and me in the air, floating. I floated above my body for a little. I looked around my environment. I took in the sounds and sight of the operating table. I looked out into the waiting room. Then all of a sudden, it started. Are you familiar with Scrooge in the Ghost of Christmas? That's what I remember that this was. I was taken, not ever steer myself, through years and years in the world where I died on that table. I saw my parents break down in divorce. My best friend unalive themselves, and the world plunge into sadness. I never saw any angels or beings. My ghost couldn't interact with anything, but I couldn't look away or stop either. There were beautiful parts, watching friends and family grow up, but I distinctly remember the sadness most of all. Their sadness. It felt like I was almost projected through a screen sometimes, rather than me physically being there. I also remember the sensation of a brain death feeling, like turning off a CRT TV. Everything starts to close in one singularity in the center. The, air quote, the tunnel of light. The closer your brain is to death, as if that TV was turning off in a super slow motion. Then, as the tunnel become immeasurably small, I found myself above my body on the table watching the surgeons fight with his assistant and my parents crying outside the ICU. The St. Louis Rams were playing the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on the TV. For the same reason in all the panic and chaos, my brain took solace in the relative innocence, nostalgia, and courage of the game. I consciously told myself, let's just go back. But I wasn't sure how. I remember willing myself to lay in my body and just kind of hope that it worked. All faded to black and time violently returned back to normal in a normal pace. The yelling ringing loudly in my ears. For the next seven days, I was alive, but in a coma. I was dead for something around three minutes, but literally years and years passed in there. The coma was much different too. If it wasn't for my ability to track the football games in the coma, something I really didn't care for before, I wouldn't have known what year it was. Suffice to say, that experience has dramatically shaped my outlook on life and how I lived it. Life is fragile, but mysterious and nobody really knows what's there when a TV finally goes completely dark. There is something real, however, in the idea that you live through the years of those you touch, almost like a weird quantum entanglement thing. We can all see and hear each other in other than death. Love, I believe, is indeed some kind of profound superpower that facilitates this. The scene at the end of the Interstellar movie where Matthew McConaughey is looking at his daughter through the bookshelf, watching her grow up and communicate as gravity on dust particles was the same time with something visually close of what I saw. That's what it felt too. For some reason, regardless of time and space, we're connected to those we love in a way our mortal perceptions of reality simply don't understand completely. Also, Anyone who's died or in a coma should be treated like they can still hear you. I could in all those astral years it takes for your body to shed its mortal coil. Those words you hear could be the most important of all. I'm starting to ramble off, but I do appreciate the ability to finally get this out in writing. It's still so surreal and I feel like it lets down people's expectations and hope. But for me, I saw it as positive and profound in a way that I can never consider before as a person. Someone told me to post this here. When I was 10 years old, I was pronounced dead for five minutes. How? Well, I fell off a bridge, hit my head on a rock, and died in the ambulance. I was brought back to life shortly. They never told me how, though. I was only a kid. I saw some things, 
I just heard screams around me when I fell. Then silence. I couldn't feel anything. It was a quick death. And then I saw my grandpa, who died of a heart attack. My dad, who died of a gunshot. And my grandma, who died of cancer. They were all waving and looking at me while I was being lifted up to them. I saw someone familiar that everyone else knows. I think I saw God, but I couldn't describe him. Next thing I know, I'm in a hospital bed, surrounded by machines and doctors. I had to get surgery on my head. It's been five years, but I'm perfectly fine now. But I can't get over of what I saw. I feel like I was taking up three-fourths of my room, like I was cramming to it and my soul was too big for where I was standing. I felt like a giant. Then I felt my entire awareness expand into an extra dimension beyond a 3D plane. Like my entire mind was consumed by the true depth of what reality is really like. I'd always thought that when someone described the other side as something more real than real, that they meant that it felt like 8K resolution while well, we're living in 4K resolution now. That's not the case at all. There's an entirely new depth, dimension of realness to reality. The difference is greater than when you compare a 2D image to something three-dimensional. I can't really stress this enough. To compare how reality for us on Earth really feels like right now, it's like a difference between a dream and being awake. It felt like one would need to qualitatively combine a thousand of earth realities to match the depth of realness that the other place has. It's like we're on earth having inserted ourselves into a sims character or dolls in a dollhouse to play. Everything on earth looks plastic and seems fake to me since that day. I instantly felt more intense love and life feeling if the word life had an essence that was completely unimaginable and that words cannot describe. The love I felt was so intense that I could physically feel it throughout my body's soul. And I instantly recoiled in horror at the realization that all of my suffering on earth was meaningless and that true reality is nothing but love in life. There was a soul song that had a death dimension to it that in no audio or song on earth has or could ever compare to. It was like the hum of millions of voices talking distinctly and individually but together in the wholeness to create a single sound that vibrates my very being and imbuing the very essence of the words life and love into my soul. The atmosphere was like the lively chatter of a tropical rainforest. If the density were multiplied by millions of times, it was so beautiful and felt so good that I was crying the whole time. The feeling is so distinct and unique that you try to explain this to you. It's like trying to explain what it's like to see someone who has been blind since birth. You really can't understand if I tell you. It's not just a sixth sense. you literally incapable of imagining what it's like, even if I explain a thousands of pages in different phrases. It's just so naturally unfathomable to the human mind. I never could have imagined such a feeling if I give it all the time in the world to contemplate. Neither can you. My mind felt faster and more intelligent than the fastest of the world's supercomputers combined and multiplied. I left out some of my experience of realization, but I may be able to answer some questions. Someone asked me, during my NDE, did they tell you the, what the purpose of life is? Yes. The purpose of life is just to have fun. There's a dual purpose of learning more about what it's like to experience different circumstances and different perspectives, but it's largely about enjoying yourself and spreading joy where possible. It's important to learn about love. I'll add that if you want to be extremely satisfied with life when you're done, practice feeling as much love and acceptance of others as possible. Practice forgiving even the unforgivable. The light is all about perfect love. Over there, you can feel such deep affection for everyone and everything that will fill your soul. Another question was asked to me. How are you doing dealing with your return? I think it's pretty difficult to come back. There must be a really important reason you have to come back, so thank you even if you don't know what it is. My answer. 
The return's been difficult, knowing that all of our suffering is meaningless. However, temporary. I mentioned in a comment further down why I decided to come back. So stand by for the answer. Another question. May I ask when this estimated happened? My answer. It happened about seven months ago. Another question. Have you been convinced or forced to come back or did you simply choose to come back or did it just simply happen? My answer. I chose to come back for certain reasons. Among those reasons was that I was starting to remember who I was as a soul and what we are, but I didn't feel ready to remember that and greatly didn't want to. There was a huge reluctance to give up this earth self that made me turn back, though that part was entirely optional. No one was forced to remember anything or to become their higher version of themselves again. You can also simply choose not to go there if you want to. Next question. Were you fully aware of future events? My answer. None. My perspective of things on earth has changed drastically. Last question. Did you learn anything about the nature of the universe, time, space, reality, other worlds, etc.? This universe is a playground in school. True reality feels ridiculously real and also foreign to an extreme degree compared to what you're experiencing. You're not human or humanoid over there, not at the least. Our souls look like the most beautiful emblems of gold light. We're souls playing a human character in a 3D world, the same way you play a character in a 2D game. Any world you can imagine exists.